Welcome back. Today we're back and we're on another video. We have 30 subscribers and 3,000 views. That's it. Seeing I was us trying to react to Green. Seeing us. My iPad, turn off. Days to mess with your friends. Only days no, to mess with your friends. Um, Only one, do these if they're a good sport. Number one, <laughs> the ang in your friend's house and then run Pop a down a letter okay, in your friend's okay. house and then run then a redstone red comparator red out of it. Sort of then connect up the redstone under I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do. Do some sort of redstone of your there, choice. Now I'm not gonna tell you exactly what to do, but there I'll just leave that there, shall I? So then you write a book no, telling them about your angry lectern. So the lectern is saying, No, don't read me. The and then it's the I said stop and you can write whatever you want but the more they get into the book the angrier the lectern gets stop turning the page okay I promise if you continue we won't be friends I'm I'm warning you okay final warning do not turn the last page I'm not even sorry I warned you I warned you I, and I, I told him it was an angry lectern, but they still read the book. They still. <laughs> Number two, sky high. So your friend is AFK. That happens. Just make sure that they are for a second. Then place a bunch of scaffolding as high as you want. The higher, the better. Then attach a fishing rod to them. Climb up that tower and then right click. You'll then drag them up the tower, and if you carefully make your way all the way to the top, you can. And then we drag them, them up quite a substantial session. height. Then, then wait for them to return from their <laughs> AFK session, <laughs> and then simply three, remove one. the bottom <laughs> block. Number three, plant power. Not every single one of these ways to mess with your friends ends in someone hitting the respawn button. But there are ways to mess with your friends in probably worse ways. And one of them is spamming saplings all around their house. And I mean really going to town with thousands and thousands of saplings. Trust me, the investment is worth it because every sapling you place is a few seconds of your time. But it's a few hours of theirs. Given enough time, those saplings will grow and grow and grow until they are one solid mass of trees around them. I can't even see their house anymore. And if they come back in their house and they're just totally confused and they may have to dig their way out quite a long way. To clean this up would take literally hours and they won't even know who did it. Number four, you know it wasn't going, me, it was the man in the chicken costume. I think you know where this is going, but you call on your good old friend poultry man and you spam chickens everywhere. To the point where there's so many chickens. They don't even know what to do with them. And the if they the ask you oh. who did this, you can always blame the man in the chicken costume. Is it a bird? Simple, is it a but effective. Number five, is it a bird, is it a plane? Go to your friend's house, it wherever, wherever it may be, and grab yourself a bunch of scaffolding. Make your way all the way to build height, and also make sure it's directly above your friend's house. Make your way to the top of that scaffolding, and then encase a single block of lava in a couple of blocks. You wait for your friend to come back, and the chances are, curiosity will get the better of them, and they will just hit What's the bottom scaffolding, oh, and then they realize, they, they realize what's coming their way. So yeah, no, you can sit back, relax, and watch them panic else. as they try and work <laughs> out how to stop okay. a big this pillar of lava from completely destroying their house. <laughs> This is Person Moon's genuine reaction this to so this prank. She had no idea what to do. She opted for this method of water mixed with some scaffolding, and it really didn't take long for the lava to completely destroy her house. Everyone reacts differently to this one. As long as your friend doesn't mind their house being destroyed, please do not grieve. Or better yet, make it over your house and then Number watch six. your friend panic fake as they try to save hunts. your build. Your Number six, I just can't. fake treasure hunts. Tells them to go, no. go to your friend's house and pop down a sign like, that tells them to go away. to some tell specific to coordinates thousands of blocks away. Tell them that they're going to get a reward, so. to get a reward for doing so. You then travel there yourself via the nether or via elytra 
and then pop and down a sign that simply says, got them. And their face, when they see this, will be absolutely so priceless. Number seven, a new feature. You, exactly you go to your friend's house and you locate their food chest. You see exactly the numbers that they've got and, and then rename so rotten flesh to the same mutton. as their food. So you replace the mutton with rotten mutton. You replace the bread with rotten bread in the exact quantities and then you leave and that is all when someone says why is my food all rotten you tell them that it's a new feature in 1.14 seeing as lots of people are coming back to the game and don't know what's new chances are they'll believe you and see how long you can get away with it number eight don't lose your head this is a simple one where if your friend is afk and not wearing armor you dispense a silly minecraft head onto them and see how just put a pumpkin on a curved how pumpkin on their head with the curse of buying the day. I recommend <laughs> how long it is before they <laughs> notice that they're wearing one. I recommend the dragon head as it is absolutely ludicrous. Number nine, locked in a box. You take a composter and you place it on the floor. You then spam it with some vegetation to a very specific point where there's just three pixels away from the top. Place a trapdoor on the top and you'll find that you can't can't you have to actually break get out so you take at all. For some reason, you have to break your way out. So you take your AFK friend and politely push them into said composter. You then lock the trapdoor downwards, and when they come back from being AFK, they'll find that they can't escape. And of course, you can laugh at them as they try and figure this out. Credits to Doc M77 for showing me this one. Number 10. The mysterious I know A lot of people don't know that you can actually craft end crystals. They look like this and you find them in the end with the ender dragon. If you remove the obsidian, they just float on their own like this. This is how you craft them in case you didn't know with a gas tier and an eye ender surrounded by glass. Fairly simple but an expensive item. All you do is pop it down inside someone's house. Now what a lot of people don't know is that these are extremely explosive. So if your friend comes back and finds it, they may not know what it is or that they can interact with it. Basically they have a choice, live with it or punch it. And that's what's likely to happen. Number 11, thinking with portals. The portal makes probably the worst noise in Minecraft. It's so obnoxiously loud. So you can see where this is going. Hide more than one portal underneath their base and in close proximity to their main portal. And it's so annoying. It's really, really annoying. Number 12, no sleep for you. You go right next to their bed and make a small hole underneath it. You then lure in a zombie and convince them to go inside that hole. Rename them No Sleep For You. Just wrong. No sleep for you. Just right. In a world where you and then cover the hole back up, exactly how you found it. When your friend then tries to sleep to skip the night, they'll find that they can't because there's a mob somewhere, and they may spend ages looking for it before they find that mob and realize they've been pranked. Number 13, bamboozle. You take the bamboo plant and you start spamming it all around their base, kind of like we did with the saplings. However, this is a different kind of annoying because bamboo is very easy to get rid of. Or is it? If you take sword, the bamboo so plant and try and whack it in this quantity with a sword, it that is so is painfully now, laggy to get rid of that this, this is just your life now. I would rather you know, just I'll live with the bamboo because this is absolute torture. We go all the way to draw a bonk a little more until I created a path to outside my house. And then at this point, I, I wouldn't even try and watching your friend I lag around trying try to out. get rid of the bamboo is absolutely And watching hilarious. your friend lag around 14, trying to get rid of the bamboo so is absolutely hilarious. Number 14, snowed in. Snowed in. So let's pretend house, that your friend has made their house in a snowy area. Just outside their house, we're going to dig a big hole. 
once you get down deep enough for them to take a dive, you take your scaffolding block and build it high enough so that it is at the level as the snow. You then cover up the hole using the scaffolding and then cover that up with snow completely hiding our new scaffolding floor. We then play the long game and hide underneath it until our friend comes back along to enter their home. If you time it just right, as you hit the bottom block of the scaffolding, they should come tumbling down into your pitfall. Number 15, still very annoying. People used to do this when Minecraft first came out and it's still annoying. Pop some obsidian <sighs> over your friend's chests and watch them go. <sighs> annoying. Pop Number 16, surprise creeper. You can watch annoying. Them go. Pop some obsidian <sighs> over your friend's Number chests and right. watch them go. <sighs> Number 16, <laughs> surprise creeper. You could probably work out what we're going to be doing here, but you go inside your friend's house, you then knock through a tiny hole just above their ceiling and place two trap doors. This will ensure maximum carnage. You then place a third trap door on the ceiling, you lure in a creeper with a big risk involved into that space, you push him by any means necessary, whether it is by piston or by luring him in yourself, until he is in the correct position. You then make sure that your friend comes in and sees that trap door. Their immediate reaction is to open it and need I say more? Number 17, the bed bandit. This is a very simple one, but it's annoying nonetheless. Every time your friend puts their bed down, simply move it a couple of blocks. Then the next time they die, they will always end up back at spawn, which is really, really annoying. Number 18, the floor is not quite lava. So if your friend has decorated their house with a bunch of carpets, simply remove those carpets and add magma underneath. Replace the carpets, do try and remember the pattern, I couldn't remember all those colors. And then watch as when they come in there, please remove those carpets and add magma underneath. Replace the carpets, do try and remember the pattern, I couldn't remember all those colours. And then watch as when they come in their house, they try and figure out why they're taking a lot of damage. Number 19, that shouldn't be there. Enter your friend's house and remove some of the ceiling blocks and replace them with a slightly odd colour, such as acacia. Then go into the ceiling itself and add a bunch of anvils. They will then walk into their house, think that's strange and fix their roof just to find a bunch of anvils falling on them. And it doesn't matter which part they try and break, it, they will all Outside fall down. House, Number 20, what goes up? Outside your friend's house, we're going to create another curiosity scaffold. At the very top, we're going to add a bunch of chickens because they're the easiest mob to spawn if you've got a lot of eggs. Of course, I'm just going to use the spawning eggs and you can make sure that there's really quite a lot. If your scaffolding is high enough, they won't be rendered in at all and they won't see them. Therefore, now, they will assume nothing is wrong and then break the bottom all, block. Now, of course, this doesn't do any damage to their home at all, but it's absolutely hilarious to see not just one or two <laughs> chickens come in, but a lot of chickens again, <laughs> descending upon the house. Costume. And again, you can always just blame the man in the chicken costume. Number 21, house, the mysterious gonging noise. And this time you go inside your friend's house, we make another secret room, and, and this time we're going to make a hopper clock that every now and again, depending on how many items you put in the hopper, will dispense an arrow at a couple of bells. And every now and again, and your friend is going to hear a mysterious <laughs> and wonder fish. where it came from. Number 22, a hidden fish. You go to the front door of your friend's house and knock out a single block next to the door. You then place a puffer fish, and when they try and walk in, they will take a lot of damage. The more puffer fish you hide, the deadlier it gets. Number 23, snowmen. I think this is pretty clear what we're going to be doing. We're going to be placing a lot of snow blocks with carved pumpkins and letting them do their thing. The more you add, the more snow there is and the harder the cleanup is when they discover it. 
my lazy goodness, how annoying would that be? Number 24, lazy woodcutting. Everyone's been doing this to annoy, woodcutting. Woodcutting. Been doing this to annoy servers for generations. For generations. You take out the most accessible part of the tree and leave the rest, leaving a bunch of floating trees all around. A base. It actually hurts to see that. Number 25, wordplay. You go into your friend's chest or barrel, you take all of their grey blocks in particular, and you mix up their names. Andesite may become stone, stone may become gravel, you get the idea. When they come to build with them, they may get very confused and frustrated why the names don't match up to what they're placing. Number 26, a surprise firework. Again, go to the front door of your friend's base and make a hole relatively deep about the height that a firework will travel. You then fill up your dispenser with a bunch of very powerful fireworks and then connect the redstone up to a pressure plate that they would normally use to open their door. Make sure that it's all connected up and add a trapdoor underneath. The mixture of the two will release a firework and release a trapdoor at the same time and it can be a very confusing experience where they may even fall in the hole and take damage from the firework. Number 27. Seven, do it for the vine. Cover your friend's house in a small amount of vines and in no time at all it will spread all over their house. And it's very easy to place but quite annoying to get rid of. Number 28, smoking out the house. So we've got our friend's house here and we're gonna go and remove some of the floor blocks and replace the block underneath with a bunch of campfires. We then replace the floor back and it is absolutely chock full of smoke. You may even trick your friends into thinking their house is actually on fire. Number 29, the oldest trick in the book. You go to the front of someone's house, you add a couple of pistons either side of a redstone dust, replace the stone on top and add a pressure plate on top of that where the door would be. You then watch as your friends enter their home and get bamboozled by the oldest trick in the book. Number 30, the long game. You ask your friend where they are and you say that you want to meet up. They will then give you some coordinates and you go and see where they are. When you get there, you act like you cannot see them. You say, where are you? And they'll tell you right there. Make sure you don't look directly at them. They'll say that they're right in front of you. They may even punch you. You have to act all surprised and you tell them that they're invisible. And you see how long you can go for. You tell them to re-log and that you still can't see them. You tell them that your friends can't see you. Nobody can see them. And see how long you can make them think they're invisible for. Number 31, AFK again. If you're like me, and you like to AFK quite a lot, you need a bunch of ideas to mess with people that do this. The classic is to encase them in obsidian. Now we're going to take that one step further by introducing an upside down piston that is going to squash them over and over again. In 114, that will then put them in the crouching position over and over and over again, which makes it so difficult to escape. It may bring them back if you extend with all the noises, so make sure that they are fully encased. And then just watch what happens. Happens. This is what it looks like if you're in the obsidian cage. It's an absolute nightmare to get out of. Number 32, man's best friend. You're gonna have to tame a bunch of wolves, shouldn't be too difficult to find, and then you make them sit off in the corner somewhere. You then convince your friend to punch you a couple of times, saying, I bet you can't hit me four times. I'm guessing that they will take you up on that offer and very quickly try and punch you. You then run away towards your wolves and watch what happens happens when they try and do that once you make them unsit. They will then go for your friend and they don't stand much of a chance. Number 33, a helpful neighbor. If you live right next to your friend's house and you're a little bit of a prankster, you may want to consider setting one of these up. What you do is add a minecart transportation system that goes directly underneath your neighbor's house. And you need to make sure that you set it up so that the rails cover all underneath your friend's flooring. That way, if you create some kind of prank that involves your neighbor's untimely demise, then you can send in your hopper minecart and be do the neighborly thing of collecting their items. 
34. you then do the non neighborly thing of prank. not giving them back. So <laughs> Number 34, the a pretty all lame prank. So not all of these of are the strongest and not all of them involve pressing the respawn button. Some of them are just annoying. And if you put ice under someone's carpet, it may take them a long time before they realize that they've been slipping and sliding everywhere. Number 35, fake TNT. Again, go to the front of your friend's house and add some water followed by a TNT, then a stone, and then the pressure plate. You get all the fun of watching them activate TNT without any of the actual explosions, and you can make them, well, panic. Number 36, global warming. You can add in a bunch of coarse dirt and replace all of the- crops with when dead bushes, farms, or just wonder, some of them to make the it a bit more happened. convincing. You when they go to their farms and they wonder what the heck has happened, you can tell them it's a new feature in 1.14. Number 37, Skelebros. If you have a mob spawner near your friend's house, it's probably good to get some use out of it. So instead of making an XP farm, you just make a big old water trail that leads directly to their house and covered in a painting. You can use bubble elevators and water to push them all the way. They will then not realize where these mobs are coming from and will probably have a pretty bad time just hanging around in their house. Number 38, making a racket. If you go underneath or to the side of your friend's house, you can create some pretty abysmal noises using some trap doors, some normal doors, and some nose locks. How far you want to take it is up to you. But this would drive me absolutely insane. Number 39, cobwebs. If you watch your friend log out of the game and you know their exact location, there's nothing stopping you adding a bunch of cobwebs and even making a little hole underneath them. So when they log back in, not only are they stuck, they may have to panic somewhat. And Number 40, secret rooms. Bedroom. Going into my friend's houses and making my own personal bedroom has been a pastime of mine for many years now. I thought I'd include it because it's always very funny if you manage to hide a whole room inside your friend's house without them noticing, until they finally do notice and want you out of their house. Number 41, a shortcut. If you're a server administrator, it can be quite fun to mess with the inhabitants of your server by adding a command block with a sign that tells them that they can go back to exactly where they died if they have a problem. But you make a command block that actually just says forward slash kill at P. That way, when they spawn back in, they see the sign, they hit the button, and they get bamboozled all over again. Number 42, staying grounded. Your friend has just planted a fresh batch of sugar cane, and they're hoping to make some books out of it. Well, you come along and place string over every single one of them. Those sugar cane will now no longer grow at all, and because string is very difficult to see, it may be a very long time before they notice. See how long you can if keep it going. AFK, Number 43, mildly annoying. If your friend is AFK, then all you need to do is prepare some cursive binding items and dispense them on them for maximum annoyance. I recommend gold armor as it, it is the most bling. And then watch them go, oh, I can't take them off. Number 44, how many diamonds? Go inside your friend's house and take a look at their valuables. If they've got a small amount of diamonds, consider renaming them to individual numbers and then placing them back. When they come back to see their diamonds after a lengthy renaming process, they will be very frustrated as each diamond will take up a single slot. And if you've played Minecraft enough, you know that every single space in your inventory is absolutely crucial. So if they come back with a full inventory, that's really, really annoying. Number 45, call the in your inventory, is absolutely crucial. So if they come back with a full inventory, that's really, really annoying. Number 45, call the plumber. Go one block above the ceiling and place loads of water. It will create a dripping effect and then using staircases, fill those with water and it will look like their entire house is leaking. Leave a sign to let them know. 
number 46, another chicken prank. Making chicken pranks has been a bit of a theme for this video, I wouldn't know why, but you can automate the process by creating a chicken dispenser, by hiding a dispenser in their house and then linking up the redstone so that there is a comparator leading all the way back into that dispenser, fill the area above the hopper with chickens, and then as they grow up and lay eggs, they will start dispensing in their house and eventually fill up with plenty of chickens. Chickens. Number 47, stuck in the nether. You can rig your friend's nether portal on the nether side to be dismantled when they arrive by adding two dispensers, one with lava and one with a fire resistance potion. When they pop through, they trigger the dispensers and breaks the portal. If they don't have a flint and steel on them, they may be stuck there for a while. Number 48, jukeboxes. So if you follow your friend while they're mining, let them do their thing, but when you get to a pretty spooky part, play the music disc 11 and watch them freak out. Number 49, parrots everywhere. Again, this is a Number 49, music parrots go everywhere. Under your house, Again, this is a music related one. Go under your friend's house, put a load of parrots, and then add a mob of some kind, and then the parrots will constantly make noises and scare your friend into thinking there's creepers everywhere. Number 50, the best till last. So I've got my friend to put on my skin, and everything is normal. It's Except actually it's backwards. not really normal and because it's actually, really it's actually on backwards and, so and it's actually an really difficult to tell that at all. So you can make an exact replica of your skin, just, so back, your skin, just back to front and then mess with them. your friends and to make them think that down, you are actually facing them. And if you lay down, it just looks absolutely ridiculous. You can have so much fun with this. This well, because you really cannot tell anymore. Well, that is Thank 50 so ways to mess with your friends in, in Minecraft. Thank you so much for watching this video. video. In, I, know it's, so video. Watching this video. In, I know it's been quite a long way. It took me absolutely ages to make it. No, no, I'm sorry, I broke the tab, baby bear, but you can't have my rental car. No, no. Little Caesars changed the hot and ready classic and added 33% more pepperoni, which makes it 133 I've been playing Minecraft for a very long time, and over the years, I've noticed things that don't make sense. And I don't just mean trees that float in the air, standard Minecraft stuff, I mean things that don't make sense in the world of Minecraft. So I thought I'd put together a list, and I finally have enough things that don't make sense to make a video on it. And I should also add that most of these things don't make sense for gameplay reasons. I'm just being nitpicky for a bit of fun. So let's not take this too seriously. So let's begin. You see, lava, it's a dangerous thing and you can pick it up with a bucket. Makes sense. But if you throw that same lava proof bucket in lava, gone. Doesn't make sense. Now this next one gets into territory I'm not familiar with. But just bear with me, because we all know redstone to work in a similar way to this. You have a piston of some description. You then put a power source next to it. It works. But did you know that redstone can work even if it's not connected? This breaks all the laws of redstone that I know. And if you think that was just a fluke or the way I placed it... Nope. That's... That is exclusive to Bedrock Edition. Why am I getting confused? It's exclusive to Java Edition for now. It does not work with Bedrock. I do not know why. That's just how... You do you know what? We should put the entirety of redstone in here. That's just how... Do you know what? We should put the entirety of yeah, redstone just, in here. All of this quasi-connectivity stuff, it just... It doesn't make sense. Who would win in a fight? A literal pool of lava? Or one prickly boy? Submit the answer on your phones now! You guessed it! The lava does nothing! Yet... <laughs> One green prickly boy yeah, gone. 
doesn't make no, sense. A bit on the side. It just doesn't make sense. Lead, now this one's Minecraft a bit on the strange on side, but I noticed if you use a lead, animal, lead in Minecraft on an animal, this is the first time I need that. Where is an animal? Look, the lead actually doesn't well, go in your it hand. Like it's going in your look, armpit. it's kind of how many people, well. How many people it looks like it's going in your armpit. How many people? How, how many people hold their leads under their armpit like this? Wait, wait, no, it's attached, it's attached to the side of me. Everything else, holding your hand. So you're telling me in Minecraft, this deals damage. This little flower deals damage, but the giant saw blade does nothing. How is this? This is the most aggressive looking block in the game. How does this make any sense? No, seriously, I was really disappointed when this didn't deal damage. Now, I never thought about this too much, but an anvil, which famously weighs an awful lot, sinks in the water, as you might expect. But if you throw that same heavy anvil in the water, of course, like everything in Minecraft, it floats to the top. Like it's huh. nothing. Huh. Now, in Minecraft, we enchant items by going to this magical book and a whole bunch of knowledge. Well, that makes kind of sense to me. You know, I can enchant stuff. But the way you disenchant something is you use a rock that spins. This implies that you disenchant an item by scraping it off. I just thought it was strange that you, you repair chicken, and disenchant and like this, with this. Burns, if you have a chicken and you set it on fire like this, when it burns and eventually dies, you end up with a cooked chicken. I'm okay with that. That makes sense. What doesn't make sense to me is if the chicken dies on a literal campfire, you get raw chicken. Surely the same principle applies. Doesn't make sense. Minecraft so is a famously goalless a game. So why does it have a score? What is that number? And how did I get 843? What, does it mean? what is that number? There's what does no it mean? Goal. And why does Minecraft need a score? There's you. no goal. Doesn't make much sense to me. Here's one for Minecraft. you. We have carpets very, very and we have similar. pressure obviously plates in Minecraft. Both very, very but similar. Obviously, reason, one triggers redstone and one is decorative. But for water. some reason, yeah. carpets are destroyed by water. Invincible. Pressure plates seemingly invincible. I feel like they may have been forgotten in the aquatic update. The aquatic update. Speaking of aquatic of updates, have you ever thought about the, the fact ocean. that there are now tons of literal fish in the ocean, Indeed, you but you don't catch it with a fishing, with a fishing rod? rod. You Indeed, you can't capture any of these with a fishing rod. Fish you need to use a bucket. And the only fish you're ever going to catch with a fishing rod will never be the ones you actually see. Talking of buckets, if you're falling in Minecraft, you could place, if you don't suck at the game, a bucket of water on the ground and it will stop you from dying. Let's just think about that for a second. Imagine in real life if you just had a bucket of water as you fell from a plane. If you tried to just throw the water on the floor, pretty sure it's not going to do anything. You'd expect at least two blocks of water. Fino, we're not letting you go until you tell us the secret. How is your company turning all these coaches, experts, and thought leaders into millionaires? To, to break your fall. Doesn't make much sense. Now, we all know in Minecraft we have to cook food to eat. Now, this makes sense. It certainly tallies with real life anyway. But if you want to bake a cake, on this thing. Now you gotta just gonna get throw the, the ingredients on this thing. Now, I'm not even gonna get into the fact that you need to use three whole buckets of milk. I'm more interested in the fact that you do zero cooking. Could you imagine just throwing all this stuff together and getting a cake perfectly baked? It's nuts. Beacons are insanely... Did I mess up the beacon? I made a beacon way too big. That's embarrassing. Beacons are insanely useful things. They give you haste too, and coupled with an efficiency 5 pickaxe, you can mine through literal stone instantly. Even granite. Things that should take a really long time. However, 
something famously as brittle as glass, you have to torment your way through. Now this really irks me. It makes no sense that glass with efficiency 5 and a beacon takes longer to mine than something like stone or granite. Not only does this not make sense, it kind of annoys me in Minecraft. Here we are in a Minecraft village and take a look at the scale and size. One villager is quite happy to live in a 3 by 3 interior space. Really humble and kind of makes sense. House. You don't Let's really need much when you're living in a small Minecraft house. Reason, Let's take a look at how the other side lives. This. For an some reason, pillagers live in house. this, such an absolutely enormous house for such a tiny thing. An absolutely ridiculously large house compared to the 3x3 that they're used to living in. In fact, this one has a village attached to it. Look at the size comparison between this house and this one. What do they need all this size for? Oh yeah, I forgot. It's for storing their giant statues of cats and dinner parties and whatever this is. Apparently what do they need all this space for? for? What are these rooms? Apparently this is you know what they what? need it for. Giant wool statues of things. You know what, let's There's just put the entire mansion in the thing that doesn't make sense. And There's a lot of strange things going on in that house and I think we should leave. And it looks like the future is also not gonna make much sense. Admittedly this is a snapshot and this may change, but the big drip leaf, you can place an anvil on it, sand, gravel, <laughs> but if you throw <laughs> a single it. feather, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. It just doesn't make sense. Cobwebs. So you're telling me it takes longer it to, to punch cobwebs <laughs> than it does to <laughs> knock down fist. an entire Sorry. tree <laughs> with your fist. Look. Sorry, how does this you know, like, bam, you insta punch a cobweb it falls apart. You can't even... You shouldn't even try to punch a tree in real life. And you're telling me cobwebs takes longer to punch with your hand than Makes sense. It. This is something I never really thought about until making this video. It makes but sense. This is something I never really thought about until making this video. But I never thought about how absurd it is that you, the player, can just hop in a waterfall and just fly. Just go up like nothing. Like gravity doesn't exist and you can just float on water no matter what it's doing. It's just nuts and this has been around for so long. I just... But if mad. You fall if you fall on a boat, a boat you die. But if you fall a -okay. sitting in a boat, I just you're not mad. only a-okay, -okay, I just but if mad. You if you fall on a boat, a boat you die. But if you fall -okay, sitting in a boat, boat you're not only a-okay, -okay, but, but the boat also doesn't strange. do anything either. I've always felt that that's a little strange. We need to talk about the relative the strength of wheat, of because it can hold up and, and destroy a whole stack of sand like and anvils but one like it's absolutely nothing. But one little hop from a player, kaput, doesn't make sense. Walking on coals, admittedly, should hurt, that makes sense. But why, when you crouch on it and spend more time on the hot coals, does that mean you have a zero damage taken? Surely jumping across as fast as possible should be the way to do it. But they it's not. You can milk, milk cows infinitely. Just slime, think about that for a second. Down, they never run out of damage. milk. When you That's fall on slime, you bounce up and down and don't take any damage. That's Fly absolutely fine. It. Makes sense within it's the like context of Minecraft. Fly into it. In it's like water, a brick wall. Mm, absolutely fine. No Why? Damage. Even Falling in one block of water, water no mm, absolutely fine, no damage. Cauldron, Even half dead. a block of water, no damage. Like Fall in a cauldron, block, dead. Block, we all know that Endermen don't like water. A single block, a half a block, water, but they are quite happy to sit the, in a cauldron case, full of water. Run. Unless run you look at life. them, in which case, oh, run. Sorry, run for your life. Oh, 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 sorry, Dom. Oh, 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 oh,
<laughs> Walking through a two-high space in Minecraft, no problem. Even if you had a carpet there, absolutely no problem, you can still fit through. If you had a fence gate there, guess what? You can't go through it. And no matter what you do. Unless you just walk around it. There are a few inconsistencies in Minecraft, and one of them is that if you place down a pot and a lantern, both pretty similar in size, one of them floats, the other one doesn't. Why? So, in conclusion, there are a lot of things in Minecraft that don't make an awful lot of sense. These are just some of the things that I've been keeping track of. What's that? You don't think we can make Cool Ranch cooler? Boom! Over the last year, we've seen some serious updates to Minecraft, with dozens of new blocks, features, and fun injected back into the game. 1.13 added life to the oceans, and 1.14 promises to improve Minecraft as a whole. With this in mind, I thought it would be fun to share some ideas that I would also love to be in the game. Now I've got seven ideas to show you today, yes, show you, because I have teamed up with Mr. Mackenstein to make a prototype of each of these ideas to attempt to visualize what they might look like in game. Now fair warning before we get started, we're using a lot of Minecraft trickery and magic to make this work, and it might not look the cleanest, but keep an open mind and try and see the idea for what it is. Some of these are more serious than others, and some are far-fetched dreams. But let's get started with my absolute favorite of them all. In the upcoming 1.14 update, there's a new weapon being added to the game, the crossbow. It's an incredibly fun item to use. However, some people worry that this might leave the old school bow somewhat lagging behind in popularity. So I thought maybe it needs an extra purpose, one with many, many uses. I propose the bow and tether, a new item that allows you to move around with ease, but at a cost. First, here's how you make it. You take three existing items, the bow of course, a lead, and an arrow. Put them together in a crafting table, and you can create the bow and tether. If you haven't already guessed, this is essentially a grappling hook that allows you to fire it at a location, and it pulls you towards the target. Real life physics clearly now, don't apply here, but when have they ever really value, in Minecraft? Really now before everyone takes this demonstration this at face value, this isn't really how I see it working, see it this is just like the data pack prototype that we made to demonstrate. I see it working more like this, you fire the bow into the air and as the arrow travels, a lead very similar to the fishing rod follows it directly behind like this, allowing it more time to travel and give a better effect. Now this is seriously fun to use. It makes traveling upwards or downwards or even side to side much more enjoyable, but it's actually also quite balanced. Every time you use one of these, I picture it consuming the arrow and the lead, and leads are fairly expensive to make, they cost one slime and three string. Also, this has a limited range, just like the lead itself, and if you miss, the arrow will fly off without you and you are left with just the bow, leaving you feeling a little bit silly. If you chase after it, you can of course go and pick up those items again. Now if this was a real thing, imagine how fun it would be to get yourself out of holes, jump across ravines, or even save yourself from a crazy long fall. But that's not all it can be used for. If you use it on a mob, it will drag them towards you, allowing you to catch those pesky mobs that flee when you try and hunt them down like the pigs. Or alternatively, you could fish creatures out of the ocean that are physically swimming in the water, where previously you would have to jump in and chase them yourself to get some ink sacks, you might be able to just hook them in and take care of them yourself. And as you might have expected, you could also use this on players, which opens up a whole new level of PvP. As you can drag your opponents towards you, you can then whack out your sword and bop them on the head. But that also means that they can bop you on the head. Or if you're not into fighting at all, you can just save your accident prone friend from instant death by dragging them out of a pool of lava given that they actually survive that. As the elytra is a late game item and isn't good for those small jumps, the bow and tether could be an excellent way to prevent the arduous task of one by one towering when traveling around. And I know scaffolding is now a thing, but if you just need it for exploring, you know, you're just going from A to B and you don't want to leave a mess, it's kind of nice to be able to just drag yourself up those small little areas and keep it all clean. So anyway- Too much. Ooh, just right.
Fee-free overdrafts, early payday, no monthly fee. It's banking the way it should be. Chime, the number one most loved banking app. Wholesome ways to mess with your friends in Minecraft. Okay, some of these might not be that wholesome. Number one, the big boat. All you do is you place a dispenser down. Bearing in mind, this is a very expensive prank. You set up a observer clock so that it's constantly dispensing items. And then you need a lot of oak logs. Place a hopper on top of the dispenser. Place the crafting table just above the hopper like this. And set up a catchment area like so. You stand one block block away, right click the crafting table and start crafting boats. Lots and lots of boats. Now you just gotta press Q on this and not put them in your inventory or it will be much slower. All the while, the dispenser is sending the boats out into the same place. Now how many boats you want to create very much depends on how strong your computer is. Mine's pretty beefy, so it can handle it. Once you've got all of your boats set up, remove everything else and wait for the boats to dispense. And when the dust is settled, you remove it and make sure you do not touch the big boat. And it's also important that you set it up in a location you know your friend actively uses as a waterway so that they hop in this boat thinking it's theirs. Boom. Then you watch them as they move forward and... <laughs> Honestly, this never gets old. Watch them just realize that they have to deal with this. Now remember, we prank hard, but we also clean up harder. That's how you be wholesome in this one. Number two, the magic trick. Now for this one, you're going to need an ender porter. If you don't know what that is, you basically throw an ender pearl into a soul soil bubble elevator and you let the ender pearl just bounce there. Now how this works is when you send a redstone signal to close a trap door, it teleports you to where the ender pearl is. Basically, we have a remote redstone teleporter. Now how we're going to use this is as a magic trick. So this is how it works. You link up a secret button to a very well hidden ender porter and then you do the following. You tell your friend you've got something to show them. Follow me. You rush into the house, rush into the cupboard, press the button and watch them watch you disappear. Quickly rush behind them and scare them. From their perspective it looks like this. They get your attention, you follow them in just like before and guess what? Boom. They vanish. You might hear them appear behind you and surprise, surprise, there they are. Number three, the double door. This one works particularly well if your friend has a spruce door. What you can do is basically produce a pearlescent moon style door by adding two spruce trap doors. And if you really want to get insane with it, add another spruce door on the inside to really confuse the heck out of them when they try and get in their house. Now you watch your friend have a little bit of a confusing moment. Now if they're a good sport, they won't get rid of it and they'll just live with their brand new super secure system for entering their house. It may take a bit of getting used to. Number four, an original build. If your friends built a nice house, wait until they leave and go off on an adventure doing some standard Minecraft stuff. This gives you ample time to build your own house. Only it's going to be slightly less original than this one. You might need a little bit of time in order to make this, but it's as simple as copying it block for block right next to it. Make sure you remember which one is yours. Down to the finest detail, you want to replicate this. And more importantly, once it's done, you want to start bragging to everyone else on the server how great your house is and even show your neighbor what just you've just created. And if they accuse you of house. copying them, you just remember, remind them five, who Minecraft built knowledge. what house, this one's fairly straightforward. if you remember. You do number five, Minecraft large. knowledge. This one's fairly straightforward. All you gotta do is test someone's knowledge. In the new update, you can punch an iron golem with a flower and they will give you a diamond. Watch them do it and then watch them suffer the consequences. So, go back to the Minecraft wiki. AFK. Number six, beautiful now, pumpkin. So, one of your friends has gone AFK. Way. It happens. Now, now pumpkin, all you gotta do if you want to mess with him in a wholesome way is to take a pumpkin, add a curse of binding, and add some very encouraging wholesome words. Friends forever. 
Add yourself a dispenser, dispense the pumpkin, and you got yourself a very wholesome pumpkin prank. Number seven, the respawn box. Once your friend's in the mine, if they die, the chances are they will end up back at this exact bed. But if you remove the blocks around the bed, except for one, you can guarantee that they will end up exactly where you want them to, which is in an obsidian cube. So what you've got to make sure is that this is the only spawnable place left around the bed. Then all you have to do is place some walls around the obsidian box and then they will be spawning in here and without any items, they, they won't be getting out anytime soon. Make sure that there's at least two blocks deck below the bed. They spawn in and they look super confused and you can do with them what you like. Just make sure you don't give them any blocks to get out. Wait, Green, this this isn't very wholesome. Oh, and, and don't forget the, the signs of wholesomeness. <laughs> That's wholesome, right? That's as wholesome as it gets. They can mine their way out by punching, but That's as wholesome as it gets. They can mine their way out by punching, but it's a five minute ordeal. And if they get close, yeah, you can always just place a couple more obsidian. Number eight, free waxing service. Now, this only applies to people like Scar who love using copper in their builds. Now, depending on what they're going for, they might want it to be raw copper or oxidized copper. Basically, whatever way it goes, You've got to make sure that you use some wax to make sure that some of the blocks don't seem to age properly. And then watch them get very either annoyed or confused or both. Number 10, the ultimate betrayal. We are Middlesex County, a community advancing with innovation. We are building on our history of quality healthcare, growing one of the- Slyly replace the pet that they love with the pet that we love. Pop their wolf in a hole or whatever pet they have, cover it up, and push your pet in its place. When they return, their pet suddenly won't listen to them. And you can watch the confusion in their face and see how long it takes them to work it out. Number 10. Surprise! Does your friend use a composter regularly? Maybe not, but if they do, this is a fantastic prank for you. Now this one will require some very basic redstone. So we clear an area under the composter and it's very important to make sure we do things in the right order. We take a piston, put a slab on top of any kind, place an armor stand on top of that, place a Minecraft head of your choice, the scariest you can find, and then place the composter back on top using a piston. It should look something like this with a little bit of a waffle hanging out the top there. Then use any kind of plant to cover up the head here. Then all we have to do is link up the composter with a redstone input all the way down to the piston. And then once all that's done, place the observer and make sure not to interact with this composter. Of course, it's pretty obvious that there's something fishy going on here. So be sure to cover up your redstone with ways that won't interrupt the signal at all, including moss carpet. So this looks pretty non-suspicious. And now all we have to do is wait for our friend to use the composter. And then you watch them go. <laughs> that was my sky impression. Number 11, signing off. You wait until your friend has left their house. Then you look around, make sure there's no one there, and go in yourself. You find some signs that they have written themselves. And then you casually recreate them, but with maybe one or two typos. And it could be whatever you want. The more subtle the more believable it is that they made the mistake themselves. Then you just casually leave, and when they return, they will quickly discover that there are some big typos, that they might not necessarily realize that you were the one that did it. Now this is one that you can play the long game with. Steadily add typos to all the signs that they create, and they will slowly realize 
but maybe it wasn't them making typos the entire time. Number 12, hungry. Dispensers, when placed like this, can actually shoot items through the ground when they get a redstone input. This can be used to feed your friends excessively. So, you take your friend's house, you go underground, and you set up a whole bunch of dispensers full of different kinds of food. And it's very important that they're different kinds. And then you set up a piston that pushes a single observer into a clock like so. Then, a mysterious button, and perhaps a sign that says hungry, and watch your curious friends press the button and get served for meal. And if they don't turn it off at any time, it could also start to lag them out. Number 13, sky block. So, your friend's AFK again. It's cool. Yeah, that gives us an opportunity to mess with them. So, what we're going to do is create a scaffolding all the way up to the sky limit. And what we're going to do is take our fishing rod, go up the scaffolding as high as we can go without the fishing rod breaking, and then right click to bring them up. Repeat the process over and over until you're all the way at sky limit. So, this could take a while and it could be a bit of a painful experience. Make sure that you actually have them fishing rod before you attempt this, otherwise, it could end pretty badly. It may take a while, but make sure you get them all the way up to the top where you have pre prepared a skyblock map for them to live out the rest of their lives in skyblock happiness. Watch them come back from their AFK and accept their fate as a skyblock player from now on. Of course, they'll be able to see the rest of the world, but that's not important. Number 14, I made a walking house in Minecraft. Now, this one only really works in the beginning or how much, depending on how much dedication you have later in the game. Once your friends have finished their house and they're all happy with it, let them go off into the mines and you have a brand new opportunity. Now, this may take some time, but what we're going to do is rebuild this house somewhere else. Now, the key to this is making sure that it's not really far away. Depending on how complicated the house is, this could take a while. It only took me five minutes to take down and put up again. The key here is to make sure that everything is indistinguishable. Lots and lots of screenshots. When your friends come back from their mining activities, you can wait and see their lovely reaction to a very confusing situation. I'm pretty sure they left their house there. And of course, you can repeat this as many times as you like. And if they ask if you did it, deny it. Number 15, what a pain. So this prank is actually pretty simple. All you need is some levels, an anvil, and some light gray stained glass panes. Wow, that's a mouthful. And all you gotta do is rename these glass panes to whatever you want, preferably something wholesome. You are amazing. There we go. Now, you want to repeat this over and over again until you have an inventory full of them. Now, what you'll notice is that they are invisible inside your inventory. We've got all of these wholesome messages, and all we need to do is find our AFK friend and basically just throw as many as they can pick up into their inventory and be on your way. Now, provided they're AFK, they shouldn't see this part. And then as they get back into the game to do their daily business, they'll quickly find that they're not actually picking up any of the blocks. Huh. That's weird. I've got, what is I've got slots available. Wait, what? You are smart. What? What, They'll quickly what is this? That their inventory is full They'll quickly realise that their inventory is full of, of glass panes. Keep this up over a long period of time and they will get very annoyed and very flattered by your lovely words of encouragement. You can even put the glass panes in a barrel and it won't be visible. And when they try to shift click their items in the barrel, nothing happens. They then get confused and see all of these lovely messages. Number 16, lots of XP. So your friend has left their house unattended again. Good. Now this one will require a bit of investment as we do need a lot of bottles of enchanting. But once you've got those, this 
is super easy to set up. Set you need a dispenser, ticking. a couple of observers, and the set the clock and ticking. Fill them up with the bottles of enchanting and get out of... There while so it, it spams do the orbs. In fact, the close the doors so that it doesn't do any. And then orbs. just let it go ahead and spray orbs those orbs. It'll take a while, but those orbs will start to pile up. And eventually, it could get a little bit laggy. And it's done. Now, my computer's a bit of a beast, and even it's starting to chug. So, when your friend returns, this is what they're greeted with. An infinite supply of XP orbs in their face. The jingles and tingles go on for a long time. This is 40 plus levels here. Number 17, find a face. Sometimes in Minecraft, your friends will build houses with big old windows in them. And a lot of the time, they can look like a face. You just have to give it some encouragement. Take my season eight starter house, for example. It had some big circular windows. All you gotta do, pop a couple of eyes on them and you've got yourself a screaming window. This is surprisingly easy to do in all situations. Don't forget that eyebrows can be made pretty easily as well. <laughs> a very simple and wholesome prank that you can add to any of your friend's houses. And if you want to take it a step further, you can of course add a nice moustache. Well, that's it for this wholesome ways to mess with your friends. Okay, maybe some of them weren't that wholesome, but I did my best. Best. Look, no one died by my hand. Okay, that's that's my idea of wholesome. Now remember, when you're pranking your friends, make sure that you know that they're a good sport about it. And if you ever create a mess, half the fun is tidying it up again. Today, we're going to be making a Minecraft house. But not just any Minecraft house. So we're going to make a mumbo proof mumbo minecraft house so what we're going to be making is a building so for mumbo jumbo and we're going to gift it to him it. but it's going to be and so anti mumbo that he's going to hate it and i thought to myself <laughs> what can i make a house out of that mumbo hates i thought maybe i could make like a big dirt house but then i remembered that mumbo actually kind of likes dirt houses he's made like three different videos on how to make a dirt house so that wasn't going to work. House. Then I thought, he loves his symmetry, so why don't I make a house really that's like very asymmetrical? Well. So but then I realized he'd probably really, he'd probably really like this as well. And so I figured I had to make a house that no one would like. Yeah, and this is what I've come up with. Yeah, it's a multicolored mess of madness using some of the blocks that I know he doesn't like, particularly bricks for some reason, and ice. So there's lots of things here immediately that I've been working on that I think he won't like. Well, for a start, the shape, it's, oh, it's, it's not gonna lie, this house is pretty difficult to look at. So this is kind of anti-everyone, not particularly mumbo jumbo, but the things that I'm going to put inside, now they are going to be specifically tailored to be anti mumbo jumbo, starting with this very Door, which is made of some very heavy green and redstone, as you can see. If you, if I open this, look at this. This isn't this gonna hurt him? Oh, oh no! Oh man! So everything in this house is designed to be anti mumbo jumbo. So I thought on the inside, what I could do is make the floor out of ice. He doesn't like ice anyway, but slipping around like this, it's really painful. And I thought the interior could be made out of dirt. An Although he likes dirt houses, dirt. I'm pretty so sure he won't enjoy rooms, an interior made out of dirt. So I've got enough space here for multiple rooms, and now I'm going to finish off this monstrosity of a build and get it into a state where I can put everything in it. After many hours, I have concluded that this is the most ugly build I have ever made, and I tried my hardest to make this as ugly as possible. And Good Times with Scar recommended that I put this particular glazed terracotta in here, so that, yeah, I mean, that's this is really painful to look at. So what I'm going to do is kind of show you 
some of the things that I've got in store for Mumbo, because so, I've got some pretty, pretty horrible ideas. Now, Mumbo so, one of the things is this giant mystery box. Now, Mumbo won't be able to open this until the end of his house tour, so he's got to make it through everything anti-Mumbo Jumbo to be able to see what's in the box. And I will show you that bit at the end of this tour. So, let's hop into the house. Yeah, there's, there's my terrible redstone door, and there's some signs specifically tailored to him. Don't worry, all this redstone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. All this redstone you can't see through the house. Even little things like for this door, so you can see, we've, got, we've got to crawl underneath. I have prepared right. A resource pack so as you can see, I have prepared a resource pack for him. That's <laughs> Everything about the paintings is me taking his mustache. I've got a lectern here with Mumbo's diary on, which hopefully he will then read. It's, it's quite a funny read as well. And then I've got multiple rooms that he will need to go in. So over here, we've got a... Uh, this is a secret room, and I'm actually not going to show you this one. But over here, we've got a machine that he probably hasn't seen before. Now, I have to thank Methods for this one, because I asked him to make me a machine that would impress Mumbo Jump. So, he's got to take this shulker box full of unstackable items, he puts it up here, and it's going to stack them. Apparently in the redstone world, that's a pretty big deal. And Mumbo might not have seen this design. So, when he does this, it's going to impress him, he's going to be like, Whoa, how does this work? Green's amazing. I totally didn't make this. But he's going to be like, Whoa, Green's amazing, how did he do this? And then it's going to explode. So then it's difficult for him to realise how it was done, which would be really fun. Over here, we have the villager breeding room, which is little more than a mess of villager greens. There's no rhyme or reason, and if you want to feed them, you got to press the food dispenser. Now, I'm not going to spoil everything, but in here we've got Mumbo's garage with all the cars that he loves. There we go, we've got his camper van. These are all cars that he owns or wants. They've got the Defender, the Alfa Romeo. If you know Mumbo Jumbo, you know he loves his cars. So this room actually looks nice. This is a little treat for him. Now, if we pop on upstairs, there's actually only one room upstairs, and it's my storage room. And it says Item Sorter and Storage Room. Now, if you know me from Hermitcraft, you know that I don't do storage. I just put loads of shulker boxes is everywhere. Is so Mumbo is the opposite. He really needs an really item infuriate. sorter. He needs to know where everything is. So this should really door, quite infuriate him. But in here, now, you get the key to, to the iron there, door, there, which is just down there, here. Now, I don't want to spoil what's in there, but in there, in that chest the there, you get a key to now, probably the highlight of this, this entire again, video. Now, I actually did get help from methods on this one again, because the redstone's pretty intense. But what's in here is going to frighten Mumbo so, beyond his wildest imagination. <laughs> so, what I've got is not a walking house that Mumbo made, but a giant walking mustache green. And, and when he completes his tour, here, when he throws the key in this little <laughs> hopper over here, and it's going to start walking <laughs> the gravel's going to fall, so and it's going to start to walking to towards him. him. I can't wait to see so I've got a lot of things like prepared for him, and I can't <laughs> wait to see his reaction. However, so Mumbo has so actually produced a green proof house me, for me. So let's see what Mumbo has made for me <laughs> that he thinks but is a green proof house. And then once you've seen that, you can pop over to, to Mumbo's channel to see how he reacts to this monstrosity, and particularly this. Here's the world that Mumbo yeah. sent me, well, so let's log in and see what house. he's prepared. Well, I'm in a oh. I'm in dirt house. Oh. Oh. Come on. Oh. Really? Come on. Entirely really? Out of, I, honestly, a house made entirely made out of... I, Honestly, I live in this, this is better than the, the one I made him. Mumbo, like, I would live in day. this over I the like house the G, that I've prepared for really Mumbo nice any I day. I, I like the G, house. that's a really lie. nice touch. That is something I would actually have that, on my it's Minecraft it's house, not gonna lie. Right, the big G, it's something that, it's a bit of an icon. All right, we got some signs here. Welcome to your manor house, Master Green. Follow the instructions, complete the tasks, and the door will open up for you. I hear you like flicking levers. One of these opens the front door. If 
if I get this right first time, I'll be very, very happy. I reckon it's over here. No? If I get this right oh, first man, time, I'll be on. very, very happy. I reckon it's over here. No? I bet none of these open oh, the door, Oh, man, do come they? on. I bet none of these do. I you bet none of these open the door, do they? Me, I bet none of these this do. Is, this is kind you would have thought fun. this would be fun for oh me, but goodness. it's kind of this, not. This is this, this is kind of not fun. This is not enjoyable. Oh my <laughs> goodness. This this is this is not <laughs> enjoyable. <laughs> I, I like messing with redstone and buttons. Bravo. Like the next man. I I like messing but with redstone and buttons shot. like the next man. All right, I think we have But to this is this is not Oh wait. Yeah. Goodbye guys.